In this video, I want to talk to you about how to become a researcher and steps to, to get a, a research career. So if you don't know me, I am Professor Dave Massack. I'm Associate Professor of Innovation Strategy and Entrepreneurship, and I create this whole reciprocity project to give back as much as I possibly can. There's so many people that help me out that I want to pay the favor for to help you out as much as I possibly can. So this video is probably geared more towards people that are learning to become a researcher and they're thinking of it. So it's probably somebody that is maybe in their 20s or even in their 30s where they're thinking about, you know, I actually want to go into a research career and how the heck do I actually do that? And hopefully this is going to give you some really good advice and some food for thought in terms of how to actually get a research career and get into it in such a way that it's not going to be overbearing for you. It's going to be very easy for you to actually get into the, the research career. And so the first thing I think that you need to do is, is to stop and not just think about like, I want to become a researcher. I want, I want you to actually think about, you know, what is it that you find interesting in this world? What is it that you find puzzling in your own life? You can walk around and see different things and, and you're just curious about those things. And if you have that curiosity, I think that's a good sign that that is something that you find interesting and that you want to puzzle about. So, you know, for me, um, whenever I used to read like business books and stuff like that, I couldn't sleep. It would be it would be something that I'd find terribly interesting, and I wanted to learn more about those kind of things. So, that was a good sign that I was interested in in this kind of area. Is that I just naturally was gravitating towards that. The other thing, so the second thing that I think is really important is not just to identify things that are interesting, but to identify things that are going to be profitable for you to actually go into. I think this is a mistake. This is a fundamental mistake that I think a lot of people make when they go into a research career. So I think that, you know, everything is a good thing to sort of investigate and everything is a possibility. But, you know, yes, that is true. And, you know, ultimately, that's that's what we're aiming for. But we also have to think about, you know, what are you going to be rewarded or what are, what are the ways that you're going to be rewarded to actually do this work? And there's lots of things that you aren't going to be rewarded for. So you have to be careful in terms of what you're doing. So I would actually rank order those things. So let's say you come up with five different things that you're interested in and rank order those things in terms of what do you think is going to be the most profitable for you to actually get into? And it's not easy, it's not intuitive to think about this because you also have to think about supply and demand in terms of, you know, how many people are actually going into that area and then as well as the, is there demand for it? So most people are going to be focusing on the demand side and thinking, yeah, there's demand for this thing. It's going to be really nice to get to that area. But um you also have to think about how many other people are vying for that spot. And that is really hard to sort of judge and you have to actually think about how many people are actually wanting to go into that area. So the third thing is to identify the education that you're gonna need to actually get into that field and to do something. And, and I want you to think about the bare minimum education, not like, you know, what is the best minimum, I mean, what is the best education that you need to get into that? Because I think that's a little daunting. And, you know, to get into these fields, you often just need something that's bare minimum to get into it. And, and then you can start sort of figuring out where you're going to go. The next thing that you have to think about is thinking about how you can do this in a way that is less costly than that sort of tried and true way. What is the way that you can get your foot into the door to explore what you are interested in? So if it is getting, you know, abandoning your 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 current job and going and becoming a researcher i think that's very costly and i think that would be a way that um it it, 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 it it's not going to serve you very well to do that because you don't actually know whether you you like this thing so what i would do is maybe try to do you know research on the side or puzzle about this thing on the side and see if you can write things about this thing on the side maybe at night um, or maybe you volunteer on um, during the week or, you know, you have a day off and you go volunteer at a lab to go do something or, you know, you do things on your own and you do it yourself. You're going to have to do that anyways once you start getting into the field. So you should think about, you know, is this something that I, I want to do even when I just I'm, I'm going to volunteer to do that? I think that's so important to do those kind of things to identify whether you actually like this. You're gonna identify whether you like it or don't, or you don't. 
And nine times out of 10, you're gonna think that I don't like this. And if you're the one person out of the 10 that actually likes that thing, that that be that that might be the thing that you should sort of pursue and, and sort of go a little bit further. The, the next thing that I would personally do is think about or ask people that are already in the field, how would you approach this problem? How would you actually get into this problem or get into a certain thing, um, area and, and do well in that area? So it's important to ask people that are already in that field and approach them and talk to them. So if you wanna go into epidemiology, for example, talk to epidemiologists and ask them what their experiences are. And so you wanna to talk to at least one, preferably if you talk to two or three, um, that that you can get that you can interact with um, that would be amazing right and and it's not going to be as hard as you think it is to identify those just go into LinkedIn um, go on to you know education websites higher education go into institutions and shoot somebody an email and just say I'm curious about your career how did you actually get there and sometimes people will answer actually a lot of people will answer that um, especially if you're coming at it as you know, just genuine interest and you're curious about it, then, you know, somebody is, a lot of people are very nice and, and they, they're likely to answer and give you some experiences. Or you just simply say, you know, I don't, I don't wanna take much of your time, can I talk to you for 20 minutes? And, and I just wanna talk about the career. And if you do that, your chances are you might get into the door. And, and then as well, you know what the nice thing is that sometimes those people can become, you know, a letter of reference or a mentor or something like that in the future that are gonna help you out. So just keep that in mind, just be genuinely interested. Don't be like pushy and, and sort of slimy about it. Just be genuinely interested and curious about that thing. Um, you know, the, the, the next thing that I want you to do is focus on how you could do all of this to the bare minimum because you want to reduce the amount of effort that you're going through to actually get it into the field, right? You don't want to go above and beyond and go too much. Um, you want to focus on how can you actually do this in the bare minimum way so you can get into the field, test it. And then, you know, the last thing is to repeat, constantly be repeating. How do I actually get to the next stage? How do I get there? What do I do? What's the next thing? And kind of just keep evolving and thinking about how you're getting to the next stage. And that's kind of what we do anyways in life. Um, and it's a very sort of thoughtful way of, of minimizing the amount of cost it is to do anything that's sort of a major thing in your change or thing in your life, um, change in your life, where you are constantly evolving and going to the next step and going to the next step. And you will do that probably three or four times in this in, in your lifetime. And just know that this is, you just want to sort of do a problem solving process where you're doing it to get into the next, to, to the next and constantly be curious about where you want to go. So hopefully this helps you out in terms of actually becoming a researcher and uh, getting some steps into a research career. If you follow these steps, I think it's going to be very useful for you in terms of understanding what to do next. And I think it's very repeatable for a lot of people to do this. Um, so if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Do subscribe to the YouTube channel. Take care and have a wonderful day. Bye.